I see I have a lot of friends here tonight. A lot of friends I grew up with. And when you grow up with people, you learn a lot about them. You learn who's the crazy one when they're drunk. You learn who's the one that's weird around girls. You learn which one likes to break balls and which ones can't take it when you break their balls. But, you know, the guy that has, doesn't have a lot of confidence in himself, and every time you say something to him, something little, he has to come back with the biggest thing to you, like something that really could hurt your feelings, and you can't come back anything, you can't say anything to come back from it. For instance, I was at this bar one time, an acquaintance, and an acquaintance of mine, I'm sorry, I dropped out of high school, an acquaintance of mine <laughs> was walking up the stairs, and he walks up and he trips. I'm like, whoa, Jeff, look like, it looks like someone had one too many waters. He's like, well, at least I didn't have chlamydia when I was 21 for a week. <laughs> But there's, also, but there's also that friend that thinks he could break your balls, that thinks he's friends with you enough that he could break your balls, but you're really not at that level yet. You know, like you have only known him for a couple weeks. Like my, this kid Chris I worked with for the city. He's from South Buffalo. One day, you know, and I, we would joke around with each other, and, uh, but just when it was just me and him, like riding in the truck. And I said, you know, give me a call on these nights, we'll go out. So I give, him, I give him my number, and he called me up one night, and he says, you know, Lou, what are you doing? I say, nothing, man. I'm just at the pool hall, you know, having a couple drinks with my friends. I was like, why don't you come down here, and after we'll go out. He's like, all right, that sounds good. So he comes up there, and of course, I introduce him to my friends. I'm like, hey, Chris, this is Tommy, John, Frankie, Salvatore, Vito, and Jamal. <laughs> so he slaps them up. So I'm like, uh, so what's up, Chris? He's like, what's up, my dick from thinking about fucking your mother later. I'm like, who the fuck are you talking to like that, man? I'm not your friend like that. Don't ever talk to me like that. Don't ever fucking joke around with me like that ever again in your fucking life. You are joking, right? Well, that's one of the differences between men and women. We break each other, we could sit there and break each other's balls all night. Women sit there and they break up, they talk about other people. <laughs> but one thing that men and women do have in common is we both get in our bad, in our moods. We both get in bad moods. The only difference is you guys use a dot that goes at the end of a sentence to, for reasoning for yours. We need something, I think. I know that you guys are bleeding inside or whatever the case may be. <laughs> But how about this? I don't know, this might be crazy. I think we need a reason. I think we need a word. How about this? We wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning to come home to answer all your fucking questions, okay? We come home with the money that we make from working the fucking 45 hours a week, okay? We give to you to, so you can entertain your motherfucking selves, okay? You, we come home, all, all we really want to do is come home, lay on the couch, fucking play with our balls, ESPN, and fuck you before we go to sleep. So since I'm so emphatic about this, how about we call this our exclamation point, okay? So for now on, one week out of every out of every fucking month, when you ask me, Lewis, what's wrong with me? I'm gonna say, I have my exclamation point. Leave me the fuck alone. So I've been single for about three years now. And you know, it's just that I'm looking for the right girl. You know, you talk to someone that you've talked to before and you go out with them and the same thing happens again. And then you go out with someone that's like them and the same thing happens again. It's kind of like jumping off a bridge. You jump off a bridge or you jump off of the, uh, the same kind of bridge, the same height with the same surface, if you break your leg the first time, what makes you think you're not going to break your leg the second time? You have to find the right bridge with the right surface underneath it and wait a while. And then if you jump off the bridge, you think it's the right one and you land, well then you did yourself good. Now, I don't know what the fuck that means, but I just want to take up time so you guys get your money's worth. But really, my mother, she, uh, she tries to hook me up with every fucking girl in the world. Every, that's a, and it's all, and it's always something. It's all, it's always something. You know, Ma, I don't find her that attractive. Uh, she's not my type. 
Uh, I don't think I'm her type. Wait a minute, Louie. How could you not be your, her type? You're handsome. You're nice. You're funny. It's five inches wide and one inches long. Your penis. Okay, I just threw that out at you girls so you know how what I was packing down there. But, but really, she would be, really, she would be like, uh, you know, you're really a nice kid, Louie. Ma, I'm telling you, I'm not her type. Lou, you're a nice kid, trust me. Ma, her fucking last boyfriend's nickname was Rico the Blade because he stabbed someone at 17. Mine was Louie Pooey because I used to take my shit, play with it, and smear it on the walls when I was 14. Oh yeah, oh, and add the fact that he sells crack, and I cry at every time I watch Beaches, I don't think it's gonna work, Ma. I wish, I really, I really wish that, uh, that we, that there was someone that could help us. Like, it's, I don't want to call it Dateline or nothing like that. I wish that there was someone that could help us, like a Cupid. I wrote a, I, I'm going to write a letter to Cupid. It's going to go something similar to this. Dear Cupid, for my life, this is all I ask. I want a girl with big boobs and a nice ass. A girl that's pretty and knows how to dress. A girl that actually says what she means so I don't have to guess. A woman who works, relaxes, and likes to catch a flick. A woman who doesn't complain when I ask her to suck my... Now all I want is a girl that don't make a mess and lets me go to sleep right after sex. When I come home from work, no long conversation. When I don't come home at all, when I don't come home at all, I don't need an explanation. Show me a sign, Cupid. That's all I ask. And if she thinks it's funny when I pull the covers over her head after I pass gas, <laughs> then that, my friend Cupid, will be the woman that lasts. <laughs> I mean, really, all I want to do is be able to pass gas in front of a woman. That's all I want to be able to do. I want to get to a point with a woman that I can do that. There should be a law. If you can't fart in front of a girl after six months, she's gone. If you can't base your fucking ass on her face and fart, and she's not going to look at you differently, then, then it should be over right there. It should be over right there. Because think about it. it honestly, we could ejaculate in a woman and, and possibly have a baby, and she'll be around our lives for the rest of our lives, but we can't let a steak holy fucking fart in front of her. <laughs> Since we're, on, since we're on 